You're tuned to your station for brighter broadcasting, Springbok Radio. Your host for the evening, Eric Cordell. Now we ask you to settle back and listen to our play for the evening. The time is precisely half past eight. This is Peter Tobin introducing Lux Radio Theatre. Tonight and every Monday night at this time, Lux Radio Theatre presents for your entertainment the finest in radio drama. Tonight on Lux Radio Theatre, we present a story of emergent love amidst the turmoil and peril of a world war. The story of Jacqueline, written by Glenn Hamilton, tells of the meeting between Jacqueline Le Fournier, a member of the resistance in occupied France, and John Gillam, a British pilot shot down over enemy territory. In a few moments, we invite you to listen to The Story of Jacqueline, produced for Lux Radio Theatre by Victor Mackerson and directed by David Manley. Act one of tonight's Lux Radio Theatre presentation, The Story of Jacqueline. there, monsieur, with your hands above your head. You will under no circumstances move until I tell you to do so. I understand. Who are you? 25719, Flight Lieutenant John Alexander Gillam, Royal Air Force. Mosquito pilot. I hope that this is true, for your sake. Where is your aircraft? Somewhere not too far away, I imagine. Uh, I bailed out. Why? Flak. The mosquito's a wooden aircraft. When it burns, it doesn't burn for long. I decide to leave it. You have no objection to our searching you? Have I a choice? No. Well, please, help yourselves. Bien, merci. Jean-Jacques, these papers. Who, who are you? We are Frenchmen. I'm glad. I'm not yet ready for Starlight Glyph 3. Hmm. Very simple. I have seen enough our AF officers to recognize valid papers. Flight Lieutenant Guillaum, welcome to France. If you follow our instructions carefully and enjoy a measure of good fortune, you will not see the inside of Stalag Luth III. Huh? Thank you. Just just tell me what to do. Sir, first, you will come with us. We must walk far before they break. <laughs> I must apologize for the long delay. Huh? You have been hidden in this barn for three weeks now. It is insupportable, but unavoidable. I, I have no complaints. You are a patient man, monsieur. <laughs> Et enfin, your patience is to be rewarded. Come, you must be Jacqueline. Jacqueline? Jacqueline, your first career. <laughs> Jacqueline will guide you on the first stage of your journey to the Spanish frontier and freedom. Lieutenant Guillaume, this is Jacqueline Le Fernier. You two will travel together as far as Caen. At Caen, another courier will be ready to take care of you. How do you do, madame? Mademoiselle? It's mademoiselle. I hope your successor will be as attractive as you, mademoiselle. Today, one can never tell. Only hope. Ah, bon. Now, here are your instructions, monsieur. You will be provided with bicycles, and for you, Monsieur Guillaume, the clothes of a farm laborer. You will leave tonight en route for Caen, and you will obey without question all instructions given to you by Jacqueline, and also the succeeding couriers. Bien compris? I understand. Ah, good. Now you listen carefully. <laughs> May 
May I ask you a personal question, Jacqueline? You may always ask, monsieur. <laughs> Touche. Uh, how old are you? I'm 18, monsieur. And doing this work? Do you realize what will happen to you if you're caught? I realize. Then why do you do it? Why do you fly wooden airplanes that burn when hit by the guns? Well, that's different, Jacqueline. I, I'm in a war. A man in a war. You must change your thinking, Monsieur Guillaume. You know that war today touches us all. The war is here, Monsieur. If we don't try to do something about it, it will always be here. So, we do something, all of us. There can be no exemptions. There are a few people in England who should hear what you've just told me. It is the way I feel, monsieur. Now, I think you should save your breath. We have many kilometers before us, and our bicycles are old and heavy. <laughs> yes, you're right. <sighs> it is time for us to stop now, Mr. Guillaume. Uh, uh, yes? In an hour, it will be daybreak. We must remain out of sight for the daylight hours. Is there any way arranged for us to stay? Yes. Yeah. Now. We must make our own arrangements. I'm in your hands, Jacqueline. What do you suggest? I suggest that a stack over there. Well, I say, I mean, you know, c couldn't I... Uh... Oh, you are shocked, monsieur, by the prospect of spending the day with a French girl in a haystack? Well, well it has... Certain connotations, ma'am. Yes, I suppose that did sound rather bad, didn't it? Actually, you can rest assured, I, I'm thinking no evil. Bon, then. There need be no more hesitation. Come, we must hurry. Uh, yes, yes, of course. Difficult, monsieur, as you see. We simply pull out enough straw to make an entrance, and then we will be home for the day. Um, Jacqueline, if you like, I'll go to the other end of the haystack and sort of make myself quarters there. Eh? Oh, it is fantastic. Is that what you want? Well, it, it, it might be a little better, you know, for, for all concerned. <laughs> Oh, you are so upset, I can see. Alors, ne dangez pas. It is all arranged. And as you English say, quite above the board. It is? It is. <laughs> I was merely teasing you, monsieur. Oh, I see. Well, you, you really shouldn't, you know. It's, it's hardly the thing. Ah, there. Now, look. You can just see in the beginning light. I, I say it. It's a, a little room. All complete within the haystack. Mm -hmm. And so, monsieur, if you have no objections to sliding the bicycles within, right. we shall climb in and make ourselves at home for the day. Now, you go ahead with the bicycle. Right. I shall follow and replace the A as I come. You are comfortable, Monsieur Guillaume? Mm, very. A home from home. <laughs> At last I realized a childhood wish. And that is? <laughs> Always I wanted to spend a night in a haystack. Why didn't you? <laughs> well, we lived in the center of London, Jacqueline. There aren't many haystacks in Bruton Street. Oh, uh, would you like some more coffee, monsieur? Oh, no. No, no, not, not now, thanks. It's all the same to you. I'd like to try and get a little shut-eye. <laughs> I'm sadly out of condition. Those bicycles have shown me. You don't have to pedal a mosquito bomber. It is good to see. Mm. I shall watch for a while. Don't maybe a cher anglais. I shall... Sleep well, you know. I I'm in good hands. Hello? 
Is Yuki Lan, wake up. Uh, uh, what's the matter? Jackie? It could be. It is the bush. Jumped? Where? Oh, here. Look. It's Adela. It is a German armored column. You see? Tanks. Yes. Fish of them. And camion. Trucks filled with soldiers. Well, well, why have they stopped? You don't, you don't think they're... They're looking worse? Yes. Oh, no, no. Jacqueline, it'll cease to be recreation if they get interested in this haystack. They must be quiet, monsieur. So very quiet. There are three soldiers coming towards the haystack. They are near shut sleeves. I think they plan to sleep for a while in the sun. This is getting bad. Monsieur Guillain, I'm sorry, but I'm afraid we may be discovered soon. And I'm afraid of the bush. Monsieur, please, may I come close to you, be with you? Come, Jacqueline. Come, Enfant. Here, here. It'll be all right. Nothing will happen. They are there. Hold me, monsieur. Je vous prie. Hold me. Hey, come close. It's all right. They don't know we're here. They're, they're, they're just soldiers. Taking a little time off. Like all soldiers. Put, put your head down. Here on my shoulder. That's better, Petite. That's better. Nothing will happen to you now. Oh, monsieur, that feels so good. You are sure you don't mind? Mind? Cher, monsieur. I'm so very happy. Here, stay close. Close your eyes. Try to sleep now. Oh, to sleep like this now will be wonderful. You know, Monsieur Kalam, I'm not afraid any longer. Je suis content. I am happy. Good. Sleep. When you wake up, the Bosch will be gone. Trying to move, darling. Oh, I'm so glad. How, how long did I sleep? Oh, an hour. So long? Well, we might have been. What did you call me? Oh, I, I, I'm sorry. It, it sort of slipped out. You know. Oh, please don't be upset. I, I'm sorry. Truly sorry. And it only slipped out. <laughs> then I am sorry also, Monsieur. It was only that I, I didn't want to alarm you, Jackie. You don't alarm me, Monsieur. What is your name? 
Your first name? John. John. Hmm? John. A simple name. And one we knew well in France. May I call you John? I wish you would. Hello, for me. You will always be Jean from now on. That makes me happy. Perhaps then, Jean, we should prepare to leave. Within five kilometers, we will come to a farm near the road. The people are of the Marquis. We will pass the rest of the night there and all of tomorrow. Tomorrow night, we will finish the journey to Caen. All right, Jackie. There's something I'd like to say to you. Oh, you're a very talkative young man, Jean. <laughs> I believed always that Englishmen were shy and did not know how to talk with women. <laughs> Too many novels and Hollywood pictures. Oh, and uh, what was it you wanted to ask? Someday the, this war is going to be over. Uh, and Jacqueline will be coming back. Sometime soon, I'm sure of it. All of us. English, Americans, Canadians, free French. We work together to drive the Bosch out of your country. Oh, yes, yes, I know. When we come, when it's all over, I want to see you again, Jacqueline. May I? Are you certain you will want to once you are safely home in England? Maybe I'm being impetuous. But I only know that I'd like to see you again. And what of your your girl in England or your wife <laughs> waiting for you? Oh, there's no wife, Jacqueline. That hasn't happened yet. As for girls, few, nothing serious. Certainly none who lose any sleep over my absence. It's true. I, I believe you, John. I do believe you. Oh, you can. It's, it's quite safe. Oh, I think you are an honest man. I try to be. Oh, then, then come back soon, Jean. Soon. You and all your English and Americans and free French. Come soon. And if you still want to see me, I'll wait for you to come. I, I promise I'll come back. Where will I find you? Well, my father, brother, and I live in a small house beside the sea at saint aubois sur mer It is not far from Caen on the coast of Normandy. You will be able to find us. I'll find you. Watch for us coming. Ahead, on the road. Lights. What is it? It can be only one thing. Germans. A patrol. What do we do? Run for it? No. No, we approach perfectly normally. Uh -huh. We have been working late on the harvest. It is permitted. The Germans have dispensed with the curfew for many farm workers. The agricultural golden goose of Normandy is too rich to be killed by red tape. All right, Jacqueline. You know best. But if for any reason anything goes wrong, you must escape, Jean. You must. Right. You make your way to the Hotel Lyon d'Or in Caen. Right. Present yourself and ask for Marcel. You must tell him that you are on your way to watch the bulls run at Pamplona. The bulls run at Pamplona? Right. Good, I've got it. But, Jacqueline, what of you? You ask no questions. You simply do as I say. We have arrangements to take care of our own needs as well as yours. Don't attempt to interfere and to spoil things for us. It is none of your affair. Of course not. I'm sorry. Be quiet now. We are almost there. Let me do most of the talking. Right. Speak only when you are spoken to. Huh? Remember what I said. Hey, you two, get off those bicycles. Bonsoir, monsieur. Where's your housewife? Your papers, Fraulein. Here you are, monsieur. And you, give me your papers. Uh, of course. Run. Hey, Lieutenant. There's no need to examine their papers. They are undoubtedly forged. I feel that these are the two we are looking for. Super fail, Herr Leutnant. Keep your Schmeitzer trained upon them, Brandt. Guard! Raus! Schnell! You, mademoiselle, will be Jacqueline Le Fournier, I presume. And you, monsieur, the Englander, a flieger, is it not? Oberleutnant Gillam. You will consider yourselves as under arrest. You will... Run! Run! Run, Brock! Run! Get away! Brant, you fool! Run! What are you doing? Fire at him! Shoot him down before you lose him in the darkness! Fell favor! Seize the girl! Run! Yeah! Yeah! Run! Like that! Englishman has escaped 
of Mademoiselle. But his freedom will be brief. He has no chance. Every soldier in the country is on the alert for him. You will never catch him. Never. I uh, rather think that we shall. In the meantime, however, we have you. I must commend your courage, mademoiselle. You show remarkable spirit and presence of mind. Oh, never mind the flattery, monsieur. Go ahead and shoot me or whatever you have to do. <laughs> you are mistaken, mademoiselle. We are of the Wehrmacht, the army, not the Gestapo. It is our task merely to apprehend you. We are not butchers of women and children, whether guilty or innocent. Nor do we approve of such methods. What will you do to me, then? Or to the English pilot, if you catch him? The Englishman is an escaped prisoner of war. When he is recaptured, he will receive the standard treatment meted out under the terms of the Geneva Convention. He will be held in custody in an officer's camp in Germany. Ah, ça c'est bon. <laughs> ah, so... There's more than the usual professional interest in this one, then. He's a fine man. I would not want him hurt by the bush. If his feelings for you are as yours for him, I fear that he will be hurt eventually. What do you mean? Mademoiselle, while we as soldiers of the Wehrmacht will do nothing to harm you as long as you cooperate, we cannot speak so well for those who will assume eventual responsibility for your custody. What are you saying to me? Tell me. Of course, Mademoiselle La Fournier, in view of your position as a French civilian and who has been apprehended while giving succor to the enemy, I regret that there cannot be the dull but safe routine of a prisoner of war camp for you. It is our unpleasant duty to have to hand you into the care of the Geheimer Staatspolizei, the Gestapo. Gestapo? I'm afraid so, mademoiselle. You will find their methods, to say the least, harsh. If you are not eventually put against the wall and shot at Fra or Van Zan, there is an extremely good chance that you will end your days quite soon at the Buchenwald. And this will hurt two Englishmen rather badly too, won't it? An Englishman, I might add, for whom I have little respect. Not one who would run and leave you to face such a doubtful future. You have finished your coffee? Yes, I am finished. You will come with me. Where are you taking me? <laughs> it is not your business. However, it will give you something to think about on our journey together. Journey? We will travel by train from Caen to Paris, Fräulein. It seems that your case has aroused some interest at Gestapo headquarters. <laughs> Obergruppenführer Paris is particularly interested in you. You will, of course, appreciate the significance of this. Now then, come along at once. Go. Get out. Good, that's all. Take the car back now. I'll call you when I come back from Paris. You will remain at my side, Fräulein. Until the train comes, you will be confined in the office of the chef de car. Now move. Also, 
monsieur or madame? Eisner, Gestapo. Is there any delay in the Paris train? As far as we know, monsieur, it should be on time. Good. This woman is my prisoner. I wish her confined on these premises until the train arrives. So that, make yourselves comfortable. This is not a matter of comfort. You will arrange for a special compartment to be set aside for us on the train. Of course, monsieur. And now, Fräulein, to reduce the likelihood of your attempting to rejoin your vanished Englishman, we will handcuff you securely, I think here, to this bench. There. Now you will give me no trouble. The Englishman? He has escaped. That is not what I said. As far as you're concerned, you may take it for granted that he has vanished permanently from your life. Now, Fräulein, until the train arrives, I intend to make myself comfortable. Don't try anything at all. It will avail you nothing. May I need have a drink of water? You, get it for her. At once, monsieur. Courage, mademoiselle, courage. Here, drink. There is wine in the water. Thank you. You are betrayed. The one who did it has been found already. He has paid in full. Oh. Mademoiselle desires another glass. Oh, uh, uh, may I? Monsieur permits? Uh, let her drink if she wishes. She'll have very few chances in the future. The Englishman, Gillam, what news? He contacted Marcel as instructed. With good fortune, he should be even now in Spain. Oh, what the fool! Do not lose out, mademoiselle. Uh, this journey may not be what you are expecting. Are you mean? I mean, be brave, ma chère. You are not alone, not forgotten. Now say no more. You two, what are you doing? What are you chattering about? I am attempting to offer some comfort to a French woman in distress, monsieur. And you will maintain silence? You will have no conversation with this prisoner, none whatever. Do you understand? As you wish, monsieur. It takes only a moment, one phone call, just one, for me to arrange for you to join the Fräulein. Shut your mouth. Of course, monsieur. Ah, uh, that will be the Paris train arriving. You will excuse me while I attend to my duties. Get out. Merci. Monsieur, madame, bonsoir. Bon voyage. A Gestapo sergeant. Third car from the locomotive. Oui, c'est ça. The first compartment near to the front of the train. Bon. Elle a bon chance, cher ami. Try not to kill the girl. Although, if you do, it might be better for her than what she faces in Paris. you can find. There will be lots of iron flying around here in a few moments. Give me the exploder box. Have you got the wires connected properly, huh? Let me see. That's it, yeah. It looks good. Now let us pray we have made no mistakes. Pray for our luck and for Jacqueline. Now!
Bonjour, je n'ai pas reçu l'uniforme. Shoot to keep the reds down. Jean-Jacques, come with me. The third car. First compartment nearest the engine. Run, blast you, run! Uh, yes, that's them, two of them. Man and a girl. Jacqueline. How much is badly hurt? Unconscious? Perhaps it is better for her to know nothing, huh? So much blood. Who is making that noise? The Bosch. Poor fellow in agony. We must do something about that, huh? A bullet in the head. Best remedial treatment in the world. There will be no more pain. Now, Jean-Jacques. Help me with the girl. Help me. Help me, you don't know it. Gently, now, gently. That's not a sack of potatoes from your farm you are throwing around, huh? Be gentle with her. She's dead, but the earth. It will take all the skill that Monsieur the Doctor Le Maitre possesses. Plus some that he never knew about to save Jacqueline. Oh, this one, this one, this one. At least, though, even if she dies, she is among her friends. Those beasts of the Gestapo shall not have her again, even if I have to finish her myself to prevent it. Get him. Come in and sit down. Thank you, sir. My dear fellow, you have no idea how grand it is to have you back in the squadron again. Good sir, good sir. I'm giving up for lost, you know. Really, sir? You must tell me all about it. Not much to tell, sir. I was a passenger all the way, so to speak. Eh? What's that? The French, sir. The Mackie. But they handled all... Spurred me to the Spanish frontier. Pushed me over to freedom. They went back to face the life that's theirs right now. I see. And you? Train, car, bus, and ox cart to Madrid. A diplomatic assignment to Gibraltar. Flight home on a Sunderland flying boat. Nothing special, sir. Nothing special, Gidham. I say it's absolutely splendid, man. Just good, sir. We're all proud of you. You needn't be, sir. What earth are you talking about? In Normandy, sir. There was a girl with a mucky. She acted as my courier along part of the way. There was a German patrol. Stopped us. Knew who we were. Some swine tipped them off, I suppose. She sacrificed herself for me. Distracted the Germans. Screamed to me to run for my life. Magnificent creature. You're right, sir. Do you know what I did? I ran, sir. Ran all the way back here. And left her. I left her to the Gestapo. I see. So, sir, are you still glad to have me back in your squadron? A rotten coward who would send an 18-year-old child to a concentration camp. Or, or to a firing squad. Get them, you create a problem. You're one of my men. You always will be until we're finished this beastly war and can get back to behaving like gentlemen. But I cannot condemn you for what you did. But I had done the same. But... But, sir, no, 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 hear me out, old chap. We cannot condemn you. Only you know the full extent of what happened in Normandy, and I... I love her, sir. Uh, so that's it, eh? My dear chap, what a hell you must be living in. Tell me, are you fit? The ammo says A1, sir. I see. Want to fly? Yes, sir, please. If I must. I had considered having you transferred for a while to a training squadron as an instructor. However, uh, I think under the circumstances I'll put you back on ops. You okay with you? Right at this moment, sir, if you like. Good. But no heroics, mind. You have my word, sir. You must get this out of your system, old chap. Fly hard. Fight hard. Sleep deep at night. And that's the best I can do for you, I'm afraid. Sir... There is one other thing. Yes? What's that? We'll be going back over the channel soon. Uh, second front and all that. If, if the chance presents itself, and, and you can help, let me have time to find her. What's happened to her? Please? You have my word, Gillen. As long as you are under my command, I'll do everything I can to help you. Thank you, sir. What's your name? Jacqueline, sir. Jacqueline. Charming. I do 
everything we can, Gillum. Oh, yes. Come in. Please come in. How are you, ma chère? Oh, I'm anxious for news. I have news for you, enfant, but... It's not good, is it? No, my dear. I'm afraid it's not good. Bad legs, I suppose. Dr. Lemaitre was able to smuggle your X-ray pictures to Paris. I'm sorry, but the big specialists say there is no hope. It has been neglected too long. And I will never walk again. You will never walk again, Jacqueline. And it is I who have done this to you. Oh, no, you are wrong. Wrong. It was I who blew up the train. My orders that laid the charges beneath the rails. My hands that pressed the plunger down. It was I who smashed the railway car about you, destroyed you. No. It was you who saved me from the Gestapo. Don't forget that. Yes, I saved you from the Gestapo and condemned you to a lifetime as a cripple. I thank you for my life. <sighs> I'm grateful. <sighs> and now the, the war goes on without me. But soon, sometime soon, it will end. And you will go on without the war. I know the Allies will come soon. Summer is beginning. I think this is the summer when the Allies will invade. You mark my words. I wonder if... If Gillam will come. Perhaps he will. If the fortune of war is with you. He promised that he would come back? He will come then, my pesh. If he can. And Mrs. Y are the women in this case. Mrs. X, you are alleged to clean your sink and no more. Well, I... I... Do you kill germs? I, I'm not sure. Is your sink hygienically clean? Well, maybe it is. I... Precisely. Mrs. Y, you use Vim 99? Yes, I do. You get your sink sparkling clean and kill 99% of household germs? That's correct. You see, only Vim 99 contains powerful germ-killing microbands. So Vim 99 gets your sink, pots and pans, bath and stove hygienically clean. 99% germ-free? Correct. Ladies of the jury, what is your verdict? By Vim 99. Now, in aerosol, the knockout deodorant. Shield for sportsmen. Here's the new dry spray aerosol that gives you shield protection even after the toughest game. Shield for sportsmen aerosol is made to hold its own against the toughest opposition. Dry is on contact and protection starts at once. Shield for sportsmen gives you that extra margin of safety. Look for the bold red and gold aerosol. Shield for sportsmen, the knockout deodorant. Available now. Cannot fail, it will not. You will see. Oh, is they... The airplanes. What are they? I will look. I will look. 
There they are flying in from the sea. Hundreds of them oh. are low, moving so fast. They are mosquitoes, British mosquitoes. Oh, Jean flies mosquitoes. Perhaps he is there. Of course he is there, of course. Soon he will be here. You will see him again. Oh, but... in your new uniform. <laughs> <laughs> I've been enrolled in the three French forces. Rank of captain and aide to General Leclerc. Oh, that is wonderful news. And I have some for you, Jacqueline. Oh. Your days of hiding are over. Oh. The Allies have occupied Caen, Falaise, and Salo are advancing already to Brittany and north toward Paris. Eh? The Germans are going. They won't be coming back. Oh, what will happen to me now? We are sending you home, ma chère. Home to saint Aubin and your father. Your village is not badly damaged. Your own home is almost intact. Uh, the Canadiens landed at saint and their advance in land was very swift. You will find things almost as you remember them, huh? Ah, and now I must leave my dear old damp, gloomy cellar. <laughs> I have been here so long now, it seems. Eight months, Jardine. Is it that long already? How will I travel home? Oh, the commander of the place that restaurant has authorized the jeep with a stretcher rack to take you. Oh, he is very kind. Mm. Mm, it will be wonderful to breathe the fresh air on the country roads once more. And your father has been told that you are coming. He has prepared a room for you, looking out onto the sea. He's terribly excited and proud of you, huh? We all are, Jacqueline. Difficult to find words. <clears throat> well, don't then. Go home. Live quietly. Try to forget that there were ever horrors like the Gestapo, the war, the train. I can never forget. You know that. But it's a blessing that it's in the past now. Now we. It's past. Oh, don't forget that. And Jean? Is he in the past also? My dear, I cannot answer that. We can only hope. Ah, that will be the jeep coming for you. Now we shall take you safely home to your father. Wait there. I will be back with the soldiers to carry you out in a moment. Yes, I'll wait. There will be a lot of waiting now. Yes, sir. I'm having to be all time, Pete, old chap. How did it go this morning? A pretty good show, sir. Up along the north bank of the Seine. Chaps nailed a convoy of trucks and one train. The engine went up like a bomb. I managed to get a couple of flag towers just in and from St. Valerie. Splendid, splendid. I'll get the details from your ops report. Well done. Thank you. I'll dump some news for you, Gillum. Yes, sir. Again over. Moving out of old Blighty at last. 
When, sir? Advanced flights this evening at 1,700 hours. You're in the advanced flight, by the way. Thank you, sir. Where will it be? Fantastic luck, old chap. Car. And they've repaired enough of the airport for us to set up there. It's unbelievable. But true, my dear chap. Best I can do for you, I'm afraid. From here on, you'll have to manage things for yourself. See if you can scrounge a little free time or something when you get over. I can promise you nothing. The way the Trump's advancing now, we might be at car only one night. I just don't know. But I'll still do everything I can for you. I'm deeply grateful to you, sir. Well, it's a jolly good cause, you know. Chap should do what he can. That's it, sir. Exactly. Well, trot along then, old chap. You've earned your lunch. And by the way, yes, sir, you'll be leading the advanced sights over. You can put up another half stripe on your sleeve. Your promotion to squadron leader came through this morning. Congratulations. A big boost like that. You should be able to afford to buy me half a pint of bitter in the mess before you leave, eh? You're on, sir. I asked your father to leave us alone for a few moments before I leave, my dear. I just wanted to tell you that I shall try to find your job. Somewhere, either at the front, or when I make my trips to headquarters in Londres. If I find him, I shall tell him that you are safe. Thank you. But will you tell him what has happened to me? The condition, I mean? No, not at first. I shall want to see how he reacts to the news of your being alive and out of danger. It is something that must be played slowly and delicately. Huh? I think he should be told. My pleasure, but why? If he is interested in me still, if he, if he loves me, his mind will be filled with the girl I was before the accident. He might hit me as a cripple. I knew John Gillam well for three weeks before you came to him. He is not that kind of man, Jacqueline. I will stake all I possess on it. However, if we meet, he and I, let me handle it in my way, will you, huh? I don't quite know how I will do it, not yet. But I promise not to fail you. Of course. You know best, I think. Oh, I thank you for all your kindness. It is quite wonderful. Ah, you are talking hobbies, child. Uh, and now... Au revoir, chère Jacqueline. Au revoir. Let us meet soon. Ah, oui. Be assured of it. Come in, get in. Sit down. Thanks, sir. I see. It's good to sit down. I'm tired, old chap. Oh, to be truthful, yes, sir. Cigarette? Hmm? Yes, I know you chaps have been going round the clock since you landed here. It's too bad. It's the job, sir. And you haven't had a chance to get away at all, have you? No, sir. None. I have a disappointment for you, I'm afraid. Uh, things have been going rather too well, sir, haven't they? It does rather look that way. We're moving on again, Gillum. This afternoon to Evreux, not far from Paris. From tomorrow, we will certainly only be there for two or three days. We're to fly ground support for the Canadians pushing through the, the Pas de Calais. We have big drivers for Belgium and Holland, and we're going to go with them all the way. I think in a week or ten days at the outside, we should be in Belgium. Last of Canadians. Why do they have to fight so well? <laughs> A high spirited bunch. Look what they did to the glass house at Aldershot. This is the BBC Home and Forces program. Here is the news read by Alva Ladeur. This morning, acting on behalf of the Allied forces in Europe, General Eisenhower, Allied Supreme Commander, has accepted the unconditional surrender of the German land, sea, and air forces. 
Allied troops have already begun the administrative work required for the occupation of Germany. Come in. Sir, you, you sent for me? Yes, I did get him. Oh. Good heavens, man, you look ghastly. <laughs> I can see that I should have let sleeping dogs lie. V-Day seems to have been rather hard on you. <laughs> oh, uh, the flag was rather heavy, sir. I think it was either the chaplain or the station adjutant who shot me down in flames at about about four o'clock this morning. <laughs> Jolly good show. <laughs> you come through the whole blasted war with flying colors, then get rendered hors de combat in the mess on the night we win the war. You evoke some poignant memories. Uh, yes, sir. 1918. Small mess at an airfield on the Somme. It was a thick night, I promise you. Oh, I can imagine, sir. But we're not here to rehash an old fogey's dry as dust debauchery. Come along, get him. Drunk or sober, dead or alive, there's a chap waiting over at the mess whom I want you to meet. Gillum, may I present Captain Favier of the Free French Forces? Uh, how do you do, Captain? Enchanté, Monsieur Guillaume. <laughs> you do not recognize me, huh? Well, this is something familiar, but... Uh, the uniform is confusing. If it were an old leather jacket, a beret, and a pointing stand gun, your memory would serve you better. Huh? You remember the first time we met in a field near Rouen, huh? 27519, Flight Lieutenant John Alexander Guillem, Royal Air Force, a mosquito pilot. You? <laughs> the, the chief of the Mackey Group who saved my bacon. If you insist, monsieur. <laughs> my, my dear chap, this is wonderful, but how on earth did you find me? With the help of your air ministry, mon cher. I've been looking for you for a long time. Really? But well, why? I mean, I said there's, there's nothing wrong, is there? Uh, that uh, depends on you, monsieur. <laughs> my, my dear fellow, I'm, I, I'm a desperately sick man this morning. <laughs> Try to bear with me. What the devil are you talking about? Monsieur Guillaume, I am talking about Jacqueline. Jacqueline? Fabio, Fabio, tell me. What did I do to her? Where is she buried? What happened? You did nothing to her, Monsieur Guillaume. Jacqueline did what any French woman was prepared to do. As for burial, <laughs> that will not happen to Jacqueline for many years to come. Not until she is an old, old woman. She is of good, strong Norman stock, my friend. Jacqueline is alive. Oui, monsieur, she is alive. She, she is at home now in saint Omar, living with her father. She is still waiting, monsieur. Sir, is, is, is it possible, please? Hello, my dear chap. You've been on 14 days' leave since you opened those hideously bloodshot eyes this morning. I, too, am uh, en permission, monsieur. I have a jeep, and we have many kilometers to travel all the way back to Normandy. In addition, there are many things that you must know. May I have the honor of your company? <laughs> May I have the honor of ten minutes in which to pack a bag and take about six aspirins? <laughs> <laughs> but not a moment more, mind you. She's there, in the garden, in a wheelchair. And how was it before? That night, the bicycles, so healthy, vital. Jacqueline. We'll 
get married, that's all. Oh, but this is nonsense. How can we be married? I am crippled. I always will be. There can be no children. Nothing. Darling, lots of people live together happily and never have children. It's not important. I wanted to marry you back in 1943. I was thinking about it on, on the night. On the night I ran away from you. There's no change in my feelings. Uh, only if... If you'll have me. I don't know. I've thought of nothing else. Every time a mosquito flew over, I... I wondered if it was you coming back. That's one promise I did keep. Although it doesn't compensate for what I did to you. Oh, he was simply obeyed orders. Jean. You were a good soldier. Remember how I told you that you must escape at all costs? It doesn't make me feel any better. I can never forget what you sacrificed for me. Everything. Please, Jacqueline. I don't want to lose sight of you again. Will you marry me? Are you asking to marry me because of my so-called sacrifice? Is it just that you want to make a sacrifice in return? Forgive me for asking that cruel question, but I have to know, to be reassured. You understand? I understand. And, Jacqueline, I think you know the answer to your question, don't you? Yes, Jean, mon chéri, I do know. presentation of The Story of Jacqueline. The part of Jacqueline was played by Sheila Holliday, John Gillam by Brian O'Shaughnessy, and Captain Favier by George Corellin. Others in the cast were Ronnie Wallace, Clive Parnell, Bill Brewer, Roger Spence, and Glenn Hamilton. The Story of Jacqueline was produced for Lux Radio Theatre by Victor Mackerson and directed by David Manley. Thank you.